Great. So in terms of the philosophy, the, the thinking going into this one, I guess the top priority really is just to get a reaction. Well, we need to win the game and that's that's all we're looking at, to win the game. We've got to win our last two games to still have a chance. Yeah, clearly, <clears throat> the performance on Saturday was nowhere near the standards I expect or the players expect and no one no one enjoyed Saturday. You know, and the players, they let themselves down really. They're, they're aware of that, we've spoke about it. So yeah, there needs to be a reaction, but there needs to be a performance more in fitting with what we had the five previous games to that. Yeah, you were very clear at the weekend in terms of what you thought of the match. I guess though, if you can go from the level of performance you had for Sunderland to Warsaw, then you can bounce back again with Portsmouth and that has to be the aim. Yeah, we have to, you know, it's probably a good thing we're, we're not having to wait until next Saturday to play. So, um, It'll be a good atmosphere, there'll be 20,000. Both clubs know what they've got to do. It's their last chance to get in the top two in terms of getting the three points. And if they don't win, they're not in the top two and it's our last chance really to get in the playoffs. So we don't win, we're out in the playoffs. So it's quite simple what the, the match holds. But, you know, in, in terms of Saturday, we've put a, a sort of line under it now. We spoke this morning. And as a manager, I hate criticising my players after the game. But I had no no choice on Saturday. I couldn't defend that. It was undefendable. So we're aware of our responsibility, and we let everyone down on Saturday. We know that. But the one thing we know, we've we've still got a chance. We've managed to take the season into the last week, which hasn't happened for a while here, and we we hope that we can take it to the last day. Yeah, and going into the game on Tuesday night, it does have many of the ingredients for the Sunderland match, where you have the atmosphere and the intensity. Mm. So all being well, you can see that similar level of performance. Yeah, you hope that the the sort of the game and what's on it and, and the atmosphere, as you say. Um, but at the end of the day, the players know that the responsibility for them is to, to do that for every game, regardless of what the situation is. So physically, we're way off on Saturday. Uh, I have to get to the bottom of that. We, we were miles away. And that gave us a big, big problem. The distances in the team were far too big. We couldn't get any pressure on them. We gave away really poor goals. So it was a terrible day at the office, but you know, you wake up the next morning, it was a long weekend in terms of you couldn't wait to see the players again and and sort of speak about it and, and get the reasons for it. And then, you know, we had a good conversation about it today, but clearly we know that on Tuesday, we've got to go there and get a result. Yeah, clearly given the context, there would be a temptation for maybe players to switch off or an eye to be to the summer or whatever it might be. Have you been really clear in setting down the fact that you're still in this race, there are still two games and you can't allow that focus to slip even given Saturday's disappointment? Well, as a manager, you've got to, you've got to adapt quickly between games. Clearly, there was a huge disappointment at five o'clock on Saturday. But as a manager, I've got to quickly get that out of the way and not dismiss it as such, but get behind why it happened and then hopefully get a response from the players. and. Today, I've seen a response from them, but they've got to take that into the game tomorrow night. And as I say, we've got to try our best to take it to the last day of the season because psychologically, the team above us, Doncaster, got a break on Saturday. And I feel that if we went to Portsmouth and win, then you know it puts pressure on them again, and that's what we'll try and do. Presumably, one thing you really learned from Saturday's game, or not so much learned, but would have had it reinforced, is the importance of if you have a setback in a match it's not the end of the world but if you're not able to steady the ship and, and you haven't got the calm heads out there quickly it can begin to run away from you well I've seen that once or twice and you're absolutely correct you know it wasn't a good performance in the first half but you can get away with having a poor performance as long as the score is level and the goal just before half time was a blow but it shouldn't have been as big a blow as how it turned out. We'd 45, 50 minutes to turn that game around. Obviously, Godin going through was an opportunity. To be fair, the, tackling, uh, the defender made a good tackle. But then the manner of what happened after it went 2-0, again, there's still, what, 30-odd minutes? It's, it's enough time to turn a game around. Um, from that moment on, they had their tails up and we just went flat. And I think everyone could see there was probably only going to be one winner. So the, the, the majority of the last five minutes I was sort of just trying to get uh, information through about the Doncaster score, so we were still in it. So there will be changes, I need to freshen it up, um, 
but the players are fully understand where I'm coming from. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, if we don't get a result on Tuesday, it's over for us for the season. And perhaps it might be the only opportunity some players get going in the championship. Yeah, a genuine must win on this occasion. When it comes to picking that side, from what you've been saying, then you'll have both in mind, of course, the performance levels from the weekend, but also fitness and energy levels as well. Yeah. But I've got to pick a team that I think is going to go and win a game. And we have got some knocks and things like that, so it's not going to be as easy. Like Saturday, I think, apart from Tafazoli, he pulled out late. Pretty much full, fully fit squad. Or does one or two knocks going into tomorrow night? But whatever team I pick, I fully expect a performance more uh, fit into what I would call my team performing the way I want them to, like Sunderland. But there are no more excuses now. We've got a chance to take the game into the last game of the season. We're capable of going to Portsmouth and winning. I know that. We've just got to keep believing in that and. If we put it all out there and leave everything out there and we don't manage to get the result, at least everyone knows and says, well, do you know what, they gave it everything. Whereas on Saturday, we let, we let the fans down massively Saturday and the players are fully aware of that. Yeah, that's all you can ask. I don't know, the situation may have improved with Ryan Tafazoli, but is there a temptation at this stage just to save the to and fro to rule him out for the, the final two games or do you want to keep, keep pushing that one? Well, it started at the Fleetwood match where obviously... He, he felt a knock on the Thursday and we felt if we got them through the warm-up we'd be okay he felt it and then for the Sunderland game I, you know he felt a little bit better but still I'm risking it and I think because the, the games were too close together I couldn't risk him coming out of a warm-up or him starting and coming out and the strange one was Saturday because he trained Thursday and he trained Friday and he was fit and then obviously Saturday he's felt it again so that was the situation there. So we'll have to see how he is for tomorrow night. With George Cooper, I think your feeling at the weekend was that he'd probably be, be done for this week. Is that the case? Yeah, he's struggling. There's a, two, there's a couple of players struggling, to be fit. Uh, George is one of them.